Welcome to basic setup of the Vista 20P Home Alarm System, Part 12. In this video I'd like to cover supplemental programming. When you open up the programming guide and look inside, you'll see page after page after page of programming commands. To a new user, this can be quite daunting. So today we're going to pick out the ones that will be most useful to you and explain them. Now the first caveat we have to deal with is the programming guide tells you what buttons to push but does a terrible job of telling you what the command is used for. To find that information you have to look it up in the installation and setup guide. So during this video we'll work out of both these documents. I explained the layout and the format of each command in part 4 so we'll be skipping that and moving on. First item on the list today setting the real-time clock. The instructions for this is found in the installation manual. We enter our security code, default was 1234, the pound sign, then the numbers 6 and 3. At this point, the keypad will show you the current time and date inside the computer. To make changes, start out by pressing the asterisk button. This will place you in edit mode. Enter your two digit hour setting, your two digit minute setting, number 1 for PM, number 2 for AM, the last two digits of your current year, two digits for your month, and finally, two digits for your day. Once again, asterisk to exit. You're done. Uh, just as a cautionary note, don't go too slowly while doing this, because if you wait more than 10 seconds, it will exit, setting the real-time clock mode. The current date and time is displayed. Asterisk to edit. You'll need to set the clock if you're going to do anything with schedules or logs. It's also nice when you have control pads like the 6172 that actually displays the date and time for you. Now that the time is set, let's move on to our remaining commands. Go ahead and enter program mode 4112800. The first field you'll see is field 20. I covered this in great detail in part 9, so we'll go ahead and move on. 21 is quick arm enable. This will greatly simplify the operation of your alarm. Instead of putting your security code in then arming it, you just press the pound sign and then the arm button. The command requires two inputs, one for partition 1, the other for partition 2. By default, this command is off. To turn it on, simply enter the number 1 into both partitions. Let's take a look. Let's watch your new arming method. That's much simpler. Okay, let's say it's 103 degrees out. You want to sleep with your bedroom window open, but still have your alarm turned on. This is the command to do that. It will allow you to bypass that window. Like our previous command, it just needs to be turned on for each partition. Let's see it work. I'm currently opening all three windows in the house. To bypass the windows, enter your security code, followed by 6, then the pound sign. The panel is showing you which zones will be bypassed. Now you can engage the alarm. Next, we'll talk about chime lists. Many of you have probably already discovered this really cool button called chime. You turn it on by entering your security code, then press the 9 button. Now, any time a zone is faulted, your alarm will chime. You can now hear any time a door or window is opened. After I had it on for one week, I turned it off. You'd be surprised how many times you open doors and windows. It gets old real fast. To fix this, you use command number 26, chime by zone list. This command allows you to tell your alarm system that you want some doors or windows to chime, but not others. So if you want to, you can leave that front door off the chime list. list. Again, to enable this command, use the number 1. This is what field 26 looks like. Now that 26 is active, 
You can use command number 81 to determine which doors and windows you want to chime. 81 actually has the capability of having up to 12 different lists. The one we want is list number 3. The information required for this programming will be asterisk 81 to start. Enter 03 for your zone list number. Enter each zone followed by an asterisk. It will ask if you want to delete a list. And then it will ask if you want to delete a zone. For our programming example, let's add the three windows in our house to the list. Zones 3, 6, and 8. Enter asterisk 81. List 03 followed by an asterisk. Then each of your zones followed by an asterisk. 0, 0 to indicate you're done entering zones. 0 to bypass delete zone list. 0 to bypass delete zones. 0, 0 to exit. Watch out for this problem. It took me a while to figure this one out. When you enter programming mode, the alarm automatically disables your chime mode, so you have to re-enable it with your security code, then 9. Now, everything should work. You see I opened the door, I have no chime. Now I open a window, and each window will chime. This function could be pretty handy. You can do something like put a motion sensor at your front door, and the alarm system will chime to let you know there's somebody out there. If for some reason you need to delete a list, here's your procedure. Asterisk A1. Select your list. In this case, we use 3. Enter 0, 0 to bypass the zone entries. Now you enter the number 1 to delete list 3. Then 0, 0 to exit. If you do this, don't forget to go back and turn off field number 26. It's looking for the list you just deleted, so now your chimes won't work. A quick summary of what we just covered. You turned on field number 26, chime by zone list. You programmed the chiming zones into asterisk 81. Then you activated the chime mode on the keypad. And of course, you can do it backwards. You can create your chime list, then turn on field 26, then activate the chime mode. Moving on, let's talk alarm outputs. The Vista has two alarm output types, a security alarm, as well as a fire alarm. They both sound very different from each other. The security alarm output is a continuous voltage. This output voltage comes from your battery and is used to drive your signaling device. The fire alarm sounder is not continuous. Its output is three pulses, pause, three pulses, pause, etc. This is so that you can distinguish between an intruder and a fire alarm. When an alarm does sound, the question is raised, how long will it go on for? Well, after spending an entire weekend listening to my neighbor's alarm go off while they're on vacation, I said we gotta share these next two commands with the whole world. And those commands are 32 and 33. If field number 33 is set to zero, your alarm will sound continuously until it's reset by someone. One, it'll be on for four minutes and shut off. Two is eight minutes. Three is 12 minutes. And four is 16 minutes. The default value is four minutes. Field 32 controls how long the fire alarm will sound. Default states, the time will be the same length as you set in field 33. If you wish to have the alarm sound until you reset it, set field 32 to the value of 1. It seems that we've run out of time for this video. These are the fields that we covered. In part 13, we'll continue. Time for my disclaimer. I am not a professional alarm installer. I'm just some guy that likes to learn new stuff and pass it on to others. Thanks for watching.